Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'm going to play a training game against Oshin, a patron in the Bobby Fischer tier, uh, who has been improving rapidly over the last couple of months, which I'm extremely proud to see and to say. As you can see on the screen, his FIDE rating is 1705, which is his starting rating, uh, which is incredible, since he's only been playing for four months, four and a half months. Uh, that's insanely good progress. And each month we are going to play a training game. We used to do it that uh, we analyze it together over Skype, but he prefers me to, to record the video while we play. Now I'm going to challenge him to a game. Uh, it's going to be casual and random colors. Uh, so this format is going to be slightly different to what I usually do with my own training games, because the point of these games is not for me to, to get training. The point is for me to spot weaknesses in Oshin's play and so that we can correct them during our lessons. So I want to be uh, spending less time thinking about good moves and more time thinking about how to complicate the position for him, how to get him out of his comfort zone, because I know where his comfort zone is and I already have a very good idea of what he should be improving. We've had uh, 15 lessons so far, maybe 15 or 18, I'm not sure. I would need to count them all, but uh, I have a very good idea about what he is doing wrong and wh what he needs to be improving. Uh, but yeah, so this method has worked before. We worked on a lot of his games, and and as you can see, his rating is seventeen hundred. So, I uh, yeah, I'm very happy. So let's hope we get a good game. I don't really care about the result. Of course, I would love for him to beat me uh, with something great. He plays g six. Okay, so I taught him the lion's jaw setup, <laughs> and we had uh, he had a piece of homework last week, uh, which he'd forgotten about. So we had okay. I'm not going to talk about it, but anyway, this this is sort of expected. So now I have to see what to do. Okay. Uh, so he knows the f3 setup, he knows what I usually play, I may go for the Kolmov system, or I may go for something different, for now I'm just going to play d4 to see what he does, bishop g7, I'm still going to play bishop e3. Uh, I will go for an English attack setup, depending on, on well, if he plays c5, uh, I'm going to play c3. If he plays knight f6, I'm probably going to play still after he plays e6. Okay, so this is a Sicilian type setup if he plays c5. If he doesn't, then it's a French type setup with a fianchetto with bishop, which I must admit I haven't seen before. So now, if he plays knight f6, I don't really want to play f3. Uh, I would prefer to play c4 and then knight c3. And then if knight c6, I want to play knight f3. So I'm, I, for now, I just want to stop d5. Of course, uh, d5 would be a concession which I I don't want to make, allowing d5. At least this way, if he plays d5, I can take once and advance my pawn. Usually in the Pirts and in the modern, or against the Pirts and the modern, when they play d5 and you have pawns on c4, e4, which is a sort of King's Indianish setup for white, uh, you take once and then you advance the pawn. Uh, and when black is playing with a fianchetto with bishop, then usually it's smarter to play cd uh, and after ed to play e5, because when you have these two pawns, this bishop is blunted severely, and especially with your queen and bishop on this diagonal. d6, I can't really agree with. I think d6 uh, is slow. I think he would have been better off preparing the move d5, but maybe he wants to play c5, transposing into some sort of weird dragon with the pawn on e6. So knight f6 is coming, so I'm going to play knight c3. There's no reason to waste too much time here. Bless you. Uh, Lucia is sneezing. Okay, this is... He's playing the hippo. So the hippo is... Uh, b6, d6, e6, g6, both bishops fianchettoed. 
Uh, but that, does that leave me with too much time for development? So his next move is going to be bishop b7. And then when he plays knight f6, my e4 pawn will be attacked twice. So for now, I'm just going to keep things flexible with queen to d2. After bishop b7, I can play f3, I can play bishop d3. Uh, if he castles kingside, which he is going to do, I'm going to play bishop h6. So I'm, he's playing hyper-modern chess in this game. And I'm just going to play classically to see what his idea is. I, I must say I don't agree with his choice of opening. I can clearly see that he wanted to confuse me and get me out of theory. But when moves are so logical and easy to make, firstly, your opponent doesn't waste time in the opening. Secondly, uh, you don't get anything by getting your opponent out of theory because you, you are not playing theory yourself. Now, h6 is another move I don't approve of. Seems to be another time-wasting move. Uh, so bishop d3 seems sensible. Or do I want my bishop on e2? I'm not really sure. I think I'd prefer my bishop on d3 so that when knight f6 comes, I don't have to play. Uh, when knight f6 comes, I don't have to play f3. Then on the other hand, I could also go for e5 very soon. So let's say I play f4. And he plays knight f6, and I play e5. Then he could go knight g4, which is annoying. But if I play knight, if I play bishop d3, then I would have to play f3 after knight f6. So e5 for the moment doesn't work uh, because it loses a pawn. Uh, if I play f4, then when he plays knight f6, uh, I could go e5, but then he would go knight g4, winning my winning my bishop, which I don't want to allow. So maybe a combination of h3 and bishop d3. So bishop d3, knight f6, h3. How about bishop e2, knight f6, e5? I don't like that either. How about just queenside castles? I imagine that's not a bad move. So castles, queenside. Knight f6, f3. I mean, where is he going to go? He's not staying in the center. Where does my knight want to go? That's a bigger issue. I don't know if I want my knight on g3 or on f3. So knight f6, f3. Uh, so, okay, bishop d3, knight f6, knight e2 seems like a strong move. But then I'm undefending, uh, well, then I'm defending the, the d pawn again. But if I play bishop d3, knight c6, and I go knight e2, oh, that seems fine. I'm just going to play bishop d3. I want to play classical chess and develop my pieces. I don't really care about his setup. And they shouldn't be playing illogical moves or moves that waste time. Now, if he plays knight f6, uh, I should still play uh, f3 because I have to stop knight g4. I can also play g3, uh, I'm sorry, h3, uh, but I sort of prefer f3 because I plan to castle queenside. Uh, and also because if he castles kingside, then I have g4. And I want to play knight e2, knight g3 at the correct moment, which is a, set a setup I usually play against the Pirts and the modern. Okay, uh, plays bishop to b7. That's okay. I'll just play knight e2, which is flexible. 
defending everything, getting my pieces to good squares. Now if he plays knight f6, I don't even have to... Uh, well, my, my pawn is already defended twice. I may not even have to play f3. I mean, I didn't have to play bishop d3 on the last move either because my pawn wasn't uh, attacked and I, I was already defending it, so knight f6 wasn't really a threat. But I knew that I had to get my bishop out before playing knight e2 because I don't want to play knight f3 because if I play knight f3, he has knight g4 and I would have to play bishop f4 and then I'm running into e5 where my bishop ends up on, on g3, which I don't like. I want my bishop on the c1 h6 diagonal. So at some point, okay, if he doesn't play knight f6, then I don't have to play either f3 or, or, or h3. I can now just continue with f4. Uh, and let's see what his idea is if I go f4. So if I go f4 and he plays knight c6, I can then go d5. And he would have to take, and I would take with the c pawn to keep his bishop out of the game so f4 knight b to c6 d5 uh, i'm not leaving any squares because i'm not going to take with the e pawn uh, freeing up f5 for his pieces so f4 knight c3 knight c6 d5 takes c takes chasing the knight away knight to b4 and i can go bishop check and transfer my bishop here, which I'm not really a big fan of. So maybe I should prepare that with a3, but that also seems like a waste of time. Then on the other hand, after knight c6, I don't even have to play d5. I can still keep the position flexible. So I, I like f4. I want to be aggressive and I want to see what he does. Now, I think he has been put to the test. Obviously, white has more space and more central control, better minor pieces, a better queen. I would even argue a safer king. I have temporarily allowed him to castle now, but if he castles, I can just play f5 and win the h6 pawn. So that wouldn't work because my e4 pawn is defended twice. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he should have played the hippo. I'm, I'm really not a big fan of the opening. If you need to play uh, somebody that uh, that is better than you, because you play the hippo against players who are weaker than you uh, to get them out of prep, and once you get to the middle game, you will be better. But Oshin, Oshin is still uh, slightly worse than me. So he should have chosen something that's going to give him an edge or equality or that he could fight for an advantage. And he just allowed me to play simple developing moves, space gaining moves. I mean, I have pawns on C, D, E and F4, which I don't, don't think he should have allowed. Now it's by far easier to play for white. It's easier for black to make a mistake. Well, already tactically he can lose the h6 pawn if he castles. If his king stays in the center, any of these four pawn advances can open the position up if he's not careful. And then the two bishops, the queen, the knights are jumping into the game. My rooks can get to semi-open files or open files once I open up the lines in a matter of one move. Uh, so, and, and what does he do? Uh, how does he activate his pieces? If he plays knight c6, I may as well just play a3 to restrain him and then play d5 later. It's not like he's threatening d4. So I'm not happy with his opening choice. I have to say. He usually plays the Sicilian. Uh, and we have been working on... Uh, he usually plays the Nidorf. And we have been working on his game against the Prince, the f3 Sicilian, which I play. So I kind of secretly wanted us to play that to meet him head to head in theory because that's best for him for his training i don't think uh players who are bad like me and oshin and everybody below i would say fide master levels uh, should avoid theory and avoid straightforward games with weird openings you're just not good enough to do that and i think we should be playing the Sicilians or e5 or e4 and d4 on move one, not some weird stuff. 
Oh, it's okay if you want to confuse lower rated or higher rated opponents, but ge generally it's it's best to just have enough courage to play normal stuff. Now he's thinking, and I can understand that because it's it's not really easy to play this position. So the the recording schedule has been put to the vote uh, on the Patreon feed. Uh, for now, the Benoni is in the lead. If nothing changes after the Slav finishes, I'm going to be recording the Benoni, which I'm happy about uh, because I like the defense. Less space, worse pieces, a less safe king, less time, and a worse pawn structure. More weaknesses, light squared weaknesses on the queen side, dark squared weaknesses on the king side. In the hippo structure, you, you need to break with f5 or c5 at some point to break open white center. In this position, I'm not sure either of them work, because if he plays c5, he's leaving me with a very solid Maroxi bind if I take. Uh, I don't have to take, and then if he takes on d4, he's left with a weak d6 pawn, which is backwards, I would say, because it cannot advance, controlled by the c3 knight, c4 pawn, e4 pawn. Perfect Maroxi bind against the semi-hedgehog. If he plays c5 and takes on d4, bishop d4, bishop d4, knight d4, uh, and he plays a6, we have a great version of the hedgehog for white. With the Maroxi bind, uh, and in addition to that, the f4 pawn and the dark squared bishop has been exchanged for black. So, I wouldn't say c5 works. f5... Uh, if he plays f5, I think I would just take it to see what he does. If he takes with the g-pawn, I castle queenside. If he takes uh, with the e-pawn, the center is open. If he takes with the knight, I take it. Uh, it's true that I'm hanging my g2-pawn, but I would just play rook g1 and develop my rook with tempo, castle queenside. I'm not really worried about that. But f5 may be the best option he has here. Okay, and he doesn't play it. Uh, I think I think f5 was definitely a good choice here. So what does he do here? Does he want to castle queen side? So now c5 is stronger, supported by the knight. Uh, so I believe I'm just going to castle. Uh, I don't see a reason not to. Castling queenside now seems risky because of c5. Now f5 is less powerful because his bishop doesn't open up. Uh, now I'm going to just play natural moves, rook c1. Uh, if he castles kingside, I'm going to play f5. Uh, if he wants to move the queen away, he needs to play c5 and then queen c7. But now if he plays c5, I'm going to play d5 to kill his bishop and to gain the b5 square for my c3 knight. Uh, so yeah, his b7 bishop will be dead. Then if he doesn't play c5, how does he ever develop his queen? If you notice his knights, the only square they have are g8 and b8. Uh, castling is prohibited because of f5, winning h6. Uh, castling queenside is almost impossible for the moment. He would have to play something like c6, queen c7. Because if he plays c5, I play d5. This bishop is horrible. My knight has b5. So... I would guess, if I had to assess the position and give it an engine evaluation, I would say plus one and a half for white. But I'm not sure, maybe it's more. I wouldn't say it's less. The reason for that, better minor pieces, more space, huge central control, safer king, connected rooks. He plays f5 now. Now it's not as powerful because my, uh, my pawn is defended. Now I have the option of playing d5, but then his knight gets the c5 square. I have the option of taking and blowing open the center, but he could also now take with the g-pawn, which could be bad. Uh, if I play e5, he can play g5, which I don't really mind. Uh, so e5, I like e5 the most, because his bishop is still under, under, under control in a way. Once I play, once I play d5 or d5 immediately, because now my bishop is not that good. 
I can play d5 and after knight c5 I can take it. Or I can just ignore his threat and play b4. I mean, why not? To stop his knight from coming into c5. Well, I think I think that's very aggressive, and it's probably not the best move. Uh, but I like b4. If he takes on e4, I'm going to take with the knight or with the bishop. Probably with the bishop, actually. Uh, to reinforce d5 and if i play b4 and he doesn't do anything i'm going to play d5 and then his knight won't have any squares I just have to be careful about my rook hanging on on a on a1 after after b4 and if he castles kingside now i'm just going to take i think no no probably not well, I have to figure it out. But for now, I'm going to play b4. If this was a tournament game, I wouldn't play b4. But it seems very tempting to see what he's going to do against five pawns on the fourth rank. It's it's now the the amount of control is getting scary. And still, more space, better pieces, safer king, better queen, connected rooks. b4 simply prepares d5 without allowing knight c5 it's a simple move um, and i'm going to move my rook away from a1 to make sure it's not a tactical liability knight c6 doesn't work because i can just play rook b1 getting my rook out of harm's way and d4 is defended And the reason why I said the knights only have one square, g8 and b8, is that knight c6 and knight f6 run into e5 and d5, and now even b4, b5. Okay. Uh, okay, so now rook b1, just getting my rook out of harm's way. I like that move, stopping knight c6. Now with knight c6, I have d5 with tempo. Uh, so that I don't have to defend the pawn. Now d5 seems very strong. d5, and what does he do? If he advances the pawn, I can take it, and if knight takes... Well, if he advances the pawn, I don't have to do anything, really. c5 works because his bishop is undefended so c5 if b takes b takes if d takes i take the bishop uh, i like c5 c5 d takes b takes he would have to play something like b5 but if i take with d takes uh, then i'm threatening a4 b5 maybe expanding even further i want to stop any of his ideas. He's not playing c5 here, I'm not allowing it. If he plays c5, he would be close to equal. So I'm just going to play c5 myself. Use the fact that the bishop is pinned. The bishop is hanging, that the b-pawn is pinned. I think he made his life really hard here. Yeah, if he has to do this, uh, then what about just a4? Breaking through his position. C5 
Okay, so if I play knight g3, he could go h5, he could also go knight c6. So what if I go d5 first? It's not defended for the moment, but I would be opening up a lot of lines. I want to transfer my bishop to a better diagonal now that uh, now that c5 b5 has been played. I, I want my bishop here. It's not doing much here. So I'm just going to play bishop c2, which is a flexible move. If he ever castles, then my bishop is going to be a monster. I'm also reinforcing d5. And I like that idea. The bishop on b3 would be great now that uh, this diagonal is permanently open. So I think strategically bishop c2 is a very strong move. Let's see what he does. And ideally I want to play bishop b3, rook e1, take on f5, open the center up and just break through to his king. You can see that the activity of his queen is not ideal, nor the activity of his rooks, which is unfortunate for him. I would even argue that this bishop is not that good. Uh, the knights also don't have that much scope, so I don't know. He, he just killed his majors for, for nothing. And the problem is, how does he defend the pawn? I mean, he would have to advance it forward, or he would have to advance the d-pawn forward. Either way, he, he is going to lose something. So, I don't know. Uh, I would say that white's advantage is now close to overwhelming. I'm not happy with his opening choice. I'm really not. I don't think... Yeah, okay. Uh, why play the hippo? I mean, it's not that it's it's not a good opening, but you're not Hikaru Nakamura. You're not 2900. You play the hippo if you can get to the middle game and just win. You don't play it if you are our strength, weak. The same reason why Nakamura wins with the Nimtso Larsen and the first time I played it, I almost lost. Because you have to be good to play it. teammate of mine just sent me a message he, he played the first round of a tournament yesterday he lost the game against the 2100 but now he sent me that he had plus 5 on move 21 which yeah okay so I take I have to take uh, the question is uh, what does he take with if he takes with the pawn Okay, uh, this is solid. Okay, I have to take this as well. And now look at this square. Oh, it's perfect. My knight is coming in. First, uh, I want to trade the bishops off if possible. If not, never mind. Uh, I think I might even give up the exchange. So bishop b3, if he doesn't take, if he plays bishop e4, I will give up the exchange. I think, well, maybe not, maybe, 
Hmm. Okay, bishop b3, bishop e4, bishop e6, bishop b1, rook b1. The knight can't move, he can go queen e7. Uh, then my bishop has to move. I think my bishop would be much stronger than 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 the rook. So I'm just going to give up the exchange. I I think that this bishop is brutal. If he wants to take the exchange, he is very welcome to do so. I don't think it's a smart idea at all. His knight can come into e4, but after I play knight c3, it's not coming in. Okay. So let's stop the knight from coming in. Now he will have to take. And now we play chess in a position where he's going to have a weakness. Oh, he's giving up the bishop like that. Okay. Okay, but I'm just going to open the position up. And he does that. That's weird. That's weird. Why would he do that? So my pawn is hanging. If he takes with the queen... If he takes my bishop, I take with the queen, he takes on d4 and wins my queen. That's a threat. If I take, he takes with the queen. And I can go... I have a horrible bishop now. So if I just go bishop f2... I have a weakness on e6 to attack. I can also go a4 and target the weakness on a6 after I exchange. And if he takes with the a pawn, I can go rook to a7. But more and more, I feel I should just snap this knight right off. So I'm going to take it. Takes, queen takes, and now follow that up with rook to e1. Normal moves. His rooks don't have a way to get into the game. Granted, I have weakness, but it's not going to be easy to target. Uh... Okay. This is now a good position for black. I don't know what happened. I didn't think. But this this is now fine for black. So, okay. I don't think I should be targeting his weakness. I think I should be defending mine and preparing a4. So, first, let's... Let's just play bishop f2. That's the first move to get out of harm's way uh, and then I'm going to play rook to to d1 yep and then I'm going to play rook to b3 if he tries to double uh, yeah And after that, what do I do? I don't know where I messed up, but he played really well in the in the late middle game. I don't know what bishop f3 bishop f6 is about, uh, but I know that I want to play a4. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm going to play queen to b2 and queen to b3 to trade stuff off and to trade my d pawn uh, for his a pawn. I need to do something active. Uh, And I don't think he can ever take after we trade the so suit. We trade the queen's takes. takes. Rook a1, he can't take because they take. Oh, he can take because it's check. He takes my bishop with check. If my king was on f1, then he could never take. Okay, he declines the queen trade. Uh, Attacks my f4 pawn. Hmm. I'm just going to play g3. G, yeah, I don't see a problem with that. I'm going to play g3 and follow it up with rook e3. I don't really mind the light squared weaknesses when it's only his queen here. I think queen b3 is a good plan because rook a1 is strong. And what I want to do is get my king over to c3 to defend my pawn. Okay, so if I go rook e3, he's going to go queen d5, and then I can go forward with my plan. I can't go queen b3 immediately. Okay, rook e3, queen d5, queen b3, takes, takes, then he would be able to win my d pawn, so that's not good. If I go queen a3, he can just take, takes, takes, and it's with check, so that doesn't work either. Uh, Uh, 
I don't know. It's hard to find a move here. Maybe A4. Okay, first, I think I might want to just defend my rook with rook d2 and defend uh, so that I have rook e1 as well, give my position some flexibility. Because it's not that clear what he is going to do. So now I have both rook e2 and rook e1 chasing the queen away, which gives me a lot more options. I didn't like my rook on d3, it was a tactical liability. And this rook is also now defending my bishop from any, yeah, any mishaps. I'm, not, I'm far from happy with my position, I think black is better, but if I can manage to play queen b3 and a4, or a4, queen a2, or queen c2, or... Okay, he wants to open my position up. Uh... Okay, a4. Okay, now rook to e1 or rook to e2? Mm. I think rook to e1. Yeah, he's better. But it's going to be a fun end game. I'm sorry, what? Oh, it's not good to have this position with 40 seconds on the clock.
Yeah, I think he's won. Poof. Yeah. I don't think I have a way to survive this position. He's just too many pawns up. We will fight on. I'm going to try to complicate things. And now I'm going to resign. Okay. Uh, Whoa. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Let's analyze the game. Uh, so, okay, first of all, great, considering that I, I really believe that white was much better. Okay, let's see. Okay, so black is better here after B, after B5. So at which point did I go wrong? Okay, so here my assessment was correct. Plus two, which is correct. Bishop C2 is a mistake. Okay, the correct move was E5. e5 okay ed is zeros so if i play e5 so if i play e5 apparently he, he can't move anything wow okay but i didn't do that uh i took ed knight d Night takes, and yeah, th the problem was that I underestimated the power the power of my knight and just blundered into thinking that I can get some activity on on the e5 square. Instead of that, I just got the worst position where I was forced to defend. A4, okay, queen c2 or queen b1. Wow. Oh, excellent. I mean, he played brilliantly. So, okay, his opening was dodgy and horrible. But at this point, when when b5 was played, I should have played either e5 or d5. And here, especially after after d5, ed5 was horrible. So the game could have gone e5. And okay, let's say knight c6. And what now? a4 immediately, yeah, just opening the position up. Takes, bishop takes, I guess. And going for, yeah, going for b5 immediately. Yeah, I mean, great game. Great game from him. I don't believe he managed to survive what was going on on the board. I didn't take the position seriously when I was better, which was horrible. And I made huge mistakes strategically and positionally. And then tactically, Oshin played amazingly well. So great job. Uh, congratulations. I'm really happy. And I'm not saying that uh, I didn't try hard enough. I tried my best and you still beat me. So great game. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about the game and stay tuned for more chess. Bye.